What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. You know, I think we can all agree. The one thing really missing from our lives is a skill-based episodic social battling game starring Ichabod Crane's little brother, Louie, demonstrating bewildering levels of social awkwardness to luminaries of 1700s heads of state. Thank God someone out there agreed with us, and in a culmination of years and struggle, diphtheria, and crunch time, we get the Council for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Now, The Council is an episodic game from Big Bad Wolf and published by Focus Interactive. It attempts to do what most Telltale games have really tried and failed to do in the past, which is make an episodic game that has both an episodic format and, you know, a game in it. How do you do that? Well, with a large skill list, a ton of story branches, and a hyper-stylized but still more realistic look than the thick line art style of the Telltale series. Let's see how it did, shall we? The Council Episode 1 will be out March 13th, and the complete season is priced at $26.99. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for the council. Professor McGonagall post Hogwarts, Hoggle from the Labyrinth as an aristocrat, and Life is Strange, the Yellow Fever edition. And of course, graphics are at first. Now, this isn't the first time that we've seen a kind of title like this that tries to do a different, more detailed flair than the Telltale games, because of course, the nostalgia generator known as Life is Strange and its prequel, Not as Good as Life is Strange, did that prior. And the council does have some unique elements going for it, like the hyper high detailed look of the character's skin textures or movement, which I'll be honest, isn't usually to the benefit of the late 1700s characters that are shambled around the inside of the main adventure area. I mean, it's like the first time you see this guy who has to be a bad guy. I mean, I don't know if he actually is, but man, it's like antagonist on a monopoeia. Pretty sure if you overlaid a topographical map of Jared Leto's personality, you would get this dude's face. What's cool about that hyper detail, though, is that sometimes excellent design can actually show through. For example, your main character character who can change their look depending on what happens at the starting of the game. There's a couple different choices there. I love that unique look to the character too, which plays against the stereotypes of strong chins and full faces being required to be courageous. It can be easy to get lulled into that state of requiring incredibly high detail at all times, and sometimes the art style itself is what pays off, and here in the council, we get that many times. The prevailing issue here, though, is that the rest of the world never fares as well as the main characters. For example, some of the textures look terrible up close, or far away, or even forcing filtering, and that didn't remove the fact that anything 15 feet out from the main character looked like someone rubbed it in a bunch of Vaseline. What's unique here is that the game hits and misses so often at the same time. You have moments where it's a reminder of titles like Sherlock, Crimes and Punishment, and Devil's Daughter, and some of that excellent texture work. Then, of course, it completely drops the ball or fumbles the clues in various other locations. Speaking of locations, technically I'm lying because it's really just the mansion, so it's different rooms in the mansion, and also whoever designed this place is an ass. It's like, hey, we got millions of dollars. You know what I like? Couches and chairs. Let's just fill the place with only those two things. Felt like I was running through those dead family levels and Max Payne after a while. And of course, running brings us to performance. Now with the consoles, you're locked at 30 FPS regardless of the platform. On the PC, there's some uniquely poor performance at times though. For example, even at 1080p, you could still see some drops from 60 FPS on a current gen i7 at 4.6 and a 1080 on the high settings. Turning that setting down could get you stuck around the 60 FPS for the most part, but there were the occasional drops. Again, this doesn't happen a ton of times, but it happens enough to occasionally notice it. The game does have a cinematic 30 FPS lock, in quotes, and for many folks, that's actually probably going to be what they need to do. As a complete package, the council can look fantastic, and those unique lighting elements and character designs are really interesting. Unfortunately, this probably needs a performance patch or two, and the overall look just never comes together. Good game art style is a combination of elements that create this cohesive and organic worldview, but with the issues here, especially with those wonky textures and maybe even the occasional really weird lip syncing, it pulls you out of that fiction that they're actually trying to frame quite often. Sound, music, and voice. You gave us quite a fright. Take it easy, miss. Let me. I just need to get back to my room. Of course, my dear. Go ahead. You saw it, didn't you? Pardon me? He sang it de la peste. here. That is rare. You know what they say. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though.
And you know what? Let's do music first. This is actually lean. It's like ultra lean. In fact, much of the game is just going to be you driving your Ichabod Crane lookalike through various areas with no music playing. The game is a narrative adventure, and I for sure get that, but it could have really helped to have a bit more music to build on the elements of the environments themselves, or even more interestingly, to augment the themes of the characters you meet. I mean, this isn't like you're hanging out with a local dude from the 7-Eleven that gets mad when you don't give him change. I mean, you're rubbing shoulders with George Washington and others, and that lack of true theme for both location and characterization hurts it a little bit. Now, what is there is pretty good, with orchestral themes playing out in a couple cutscenes when important events occur. Let's do sound next. Admittedly, this isn't you leaping through a window as a 360 camera pans around you. It's discussion moments and the occasional environmental sound, and that's fine. But if you pay close attention and listen, there's some excellent and accurate tonal elements like hard-soled shoes on marble, and there's this wideness to some of the scenes due to their mixing and due to the different samples at work. For example, the soft hush of clothing as multiple characters are walking together, it adds that feeling and gives that wideness to the scene. And when you sit back and think about it, that's the magic of good sound work. It's not instantly noticeable in its inclusion, but with its exclusion, and that happens here often. There isn't a ton, but what is here is pretty good. And of course, that brings us to voice, and this is pretty hit and miss, and I've come up with a new rating specifically for the main protagonist called You'll Do, because it's like someone walked into a casting office and said, who here is alive? Someone said me, and they were like, you'll do, and he got the job. I mean, it. he's a monotone monster. He just kills a story. He's emotionless, and it could be the director, or it could be the actual voice actor themselves, but you know what, man? Rub some hate on there, some envy, some curiousness, or just cowardness to that performance, please. Luckily, there are some characters that I did like. For example, standouts include Giuseppe the Priest, who has this slightly swaying trust of Louis, and it's handled with a great deal of subtlety, despite how many playthroughs I did. There's also a character that really hasn't been talked about a ton, and when you meet them, if you've also investigated their background, their performance is really heartfelt and pretty damn depressing, even though it is a good reflection of the thinking of the times. This is a game where everybody's basically treated like a verbal punching bag, and so that main protagonist's lack of emotion did let me down a bit, but every Everybody else was fine. And of course that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. The council follows the actions of Louis du Richet after he is invited to a prestigious meeting on a mysterious island by a man simply known as Lord Mortimer, which sounds like the main bad guy in a Mortal Kombat game. And of course the reason why he was invited is because Louis's mother has disappeared on the island prior to his arrival, so he jumps on the first vessel and heads on over to Island Never Return for a choose your own adventure style title that really plays out like a mix of Telltale style games and a D&D game where no one knows how to fight and they just talk around to one another like Aaron Sorkin TV shows. The council plays out over a couple hours with branching elements and a no return kind of methodology and I love that. As you start out, you get to choose from one of three backgrounds, which gives you a couple starting skills from the allotment of a total of 15. Some of those skills, for example, include manipulation, psychology, or occult, and by combining and buying later levels of skills, you can actually unlock another segment called talents, and there's over 40 of them. While the skills are directly what you use in the game's discussions, investigations, and confrontations, it's the talents that augment those skills. It's a unique mix, and it's complex, that's for sure, but it also shows how focused the devs are in making sure that the social interactions are intricate and therefore at least interesting to the gamer. But to me, what's interesting is that the skills are directly connected to the characters you encounter as well. For example, you may meet someone who has an immunity to manipulation completely, requiring a different thought process to get past them, especially if you've leveled that one up. Or they may have a weakness to diversions, meaning if you continue to change a subject on them, they can get confused and give you the information you need. To use the skills requires effort points, of which you have a total number that increases as you play and can be refreshed by various skills and talents or items you find around the game world. As I continued to play the council, one of the things that I noticed was that cycle of gameplay and I really did enjoy it. The idea that I could walk into a room and find myself being accosted by another of the visitors. They could become belligerent or I could, which uses some skills that I may have, but they may have defenses against that, leaving me lacking the information I needed to really piece things together depending on which skills I've chosen and sometimes having to wait until later in the level to do anything or missing out on that information completely. You can also add to your skills total by reading books you find around the game's locations or you get from other characters. In many ways, the effort and the point system really reminded me a little bit of the World of Darkness role-playing games at times, when you're burning those points to perform actions, and it can feel like the blood system or the rage system in Werewolf the Apocalypse, or I'm sure pretty much any general role-playing system that you may be familiar with, because most of them have that now. And the game's no-return philosophy is really at play throughout the episode. It saves almost consistently, meaning you can't really minimax most conversations. 
also easily more so than the Telltale games. Things can work out vastly different here. Sometimes you're going to have a number of chances to perform an action. You can skip that first chance. You can have the story wrap around again and then try that action again in a slightly different way. And sometimes you just completely miss out. Also, the game revels in teaching you that actions matter. I don't want to ruin it, but a couple times people checked up on what I said I was going to do, which was actually pretty cool. And of course, it's at those exact times when the game is at its strongest, this unique blend of choice and chance where you can really feel like someone out there is trying to elevate the genre at least a little bit. The gameplay, though, is never revolutionary, like the time frame itself, not even close. But it is refreshing to see how many branches of choices that you can have throughout the story. Overall, there are a number of games like this, many that have come and gone, and the council tries to add a system of skills and talents on top and related to the immunities and weakness of others and that social dynamic of studying to see what others are doing and how they're reacting to you, and I love those moments. Also, though, the game can be insanely cumbersome and really doesn't use its locations anywhere near as well as it could. And of course, that brings us to fun factor. Honestly, if you could rate this with an emoji, it'd be a giant iceberg because the first part of the story is glacial. And I'm not saying I want Louis to pull out a gun and start fighting off terrorists in a building right before he ends up saving some children from a burning school. But my God, there's really nothing that actually occurs here. And most episodic games try to grab you from that starting moment, but nothing in the council really does. Sure, you do find out a little bit of information about your mother and the possibility that she may be dead, but there's a lot of hints that she's not, which removes the tenseness from it. And there's a political subterfuge that I really liked and a subtlety to some of the interactions. But then every time I would experience that, this awkward moment would pop up where everything felt like it wasn't a cohesive whole, but it was little separate bits all glued together. So as you guys know, I rate these games on a buy now or a wait kind of rating scale with each additional episode sort of adding or removing some of that value to this entire package. Now I have to say, this is currently a wait. I can't lie, I liked some of the skills and I really did like the way the talents interspersed between them and the way that you had to really pay attention and identify what different characters were immune to or what they were vulnerable to. But that cycle wore thin over time, especially when the story didn't really seem to go anywhere. Additionally, the tech issues, a lot of these got to be fixed because when you look at the tech issues on a game like a Telltale and you have a lot of people questioning those, you really want your game to come out of the gates performing well, FPS exactly, super solid, and unfortunately here, it's really not. Now that doesn't mean they won't patch it, and if they do, I'll put a comment in the comments section. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Remember, as always, you can check out my Twitter or Reddit. And you can become a patron on the Patreon website, which is what helps me give you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. And remember, every single game I review, I buy regardless if the developer gives me a code or not. Keep your eye on ACG where I'll be doing reviews of Assassin's Creed Rogue and, of course, some of those big titles that you guys are expecting for this month. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.